Hi, it's Mrs. Johnson here to teach you about subtracting integers. That would be section 11-5 in your book. All right, in order to tell you about subtracting integers, we have to review adding integers. The rules for adding integers are, if you have the same sign on the integers, then you add and give it that sign. So for instance, if you have a 4 plus a 3, both positive, it would be a positive 7. You add the 4 plus the 3, give it the sign that you are adding. Same goes for negatives. If you have a negative 5 plus a negative 2, it would equal a negative 7. You add them, give it the sign that you had. The second rule is if they're different signs, then you have to subtract them and give it the sign of the number with the highest absolute value. So for instance, if you have 3 minus or plus um, a negative 4, let's say, you have a positive plus a negative. So you're finding the difference between them. Different signs find the difference. So 4 minus 3 is 1, but because this is furthest away from 0, you give it a negative sign. So your answer is negative 1. Another one is negative um, 5 plus 6. So again, opposite sign, so you subtract. Let's do 16, that way it's a little bit different. You subtract, you get 11. And in this case, 16 is furthest away from uh, 0. It has the highest absolute value, so you give it a positive sign. Okay? Now, the reason I'm teaching you this is because subtracting integers, all you're going to do is change it to an addition problem. Let me show you how to do that. So if we have, let's say, 2 minus 5, all you're going to do is change this to an addition problem because we already know what to do with an addition problem. So in order to change it, we're going to add the opposite. That's the three words that you need to remember, add the opposite. So we're going to keep the first number the same, the first integer the same. We're going to change this to a positive. And then when we did this, wasn't that actually a positive 5? Yes, it was. So we're going to change it to a negative 5. So you add the opposite. Change it to an addition. Make this integer the opposite of what it was. So now go back to my rule. Do I have the same sign or different signs? I have different signs. So I have to subtract 5 minus 2 equals 3. And because 5 is furthest away from 0 and it has a negative sign, it's got to be a negative 3. There's my answer. Let's do another one. Say 6 minus a negative 8. Okay, so I'm going to add the opposite. 6, change this to a plus. I never ever change the first one, guys. Change this to a plus. And since it was a negative 8, the opposite is going to be a positive 8. So I could put plus plus 8, but I really could just put plus 8. And that is a positive 14. It's the same sign, so I add, give it that sign. Let's do another one. Uh, negative 9 minus mm, 3, let's say. All right, so keep the first one the same. Negative 9, change to plus. And this was a positive 3, so we're going to make it a negative 3. Then we've got the same sign, so we're adding, and we have to give it a negative sign, so it's negative 12 there. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on some of your homework then. We're, I only told you to do the odd, or the evens, so I'm going to highlight the ones that we have to do. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. And 22. I'm not going to do all of these, but I will do some of them. All right. So the first one, you start at zero. It wants the uh, problem that's been modeled here. And you go back negative two. So the first problem is negative two. And then from there, it goes this way, negative three. So it's minus a minus three. Okay? So my first problem on number 10, what I want you to write is negative two minus a negative three. Now, same rule. Keep the first, change to addition, and change the, to the opposite. So the opposite of negative 3 would be a positive 3. Now what do I have? I have a negative and a positive. And remember, let me get this a little smaller. Remember, I have a negative and a positive here. So my rule for that is that I subtract and give it the one with the highest absolute value. So 3 minus 2 is 1. And then 3 has the highest absolute value, so it's actually a positive 1. All right, number 12. 
is negative 4 minus 9. So again, keep the first, negative 4, change to addition. And remember, this was actually minus a positive 9. This is actually a positive 9, because that's your subtraction sign. This is actually a positive 9. So what do I have to do? The opposite of positive 9 is negative 9. 4 plus, remember, same sign, so I add. That's why I was getting ready to say. 4 plus 9 is 13, and since it's a negative, it's a negative 13. Number let's see, 14. No, let's go to 16. I'm going to do number 16. I'm not doing all of them today, guys. All right. My expression is m minus a minus 3, and in number 16, m is 7. So I'm going to write 7 minus a negative 3. Keep the 7, change to addition, and change this to a positive 3. And 7 plus 3 is 10. Oh, geez, that was a bad circle, wasn't it? Let's go ahead and redo that. There we go. Okay. Number 18. Now m equals negative 5. So for number 18, I'm going to put negative 5, and it was minus a minus 3, so minus a negative 3. Keep the negative 5, change to addition, and change to a positive. Now go back to my addition rules. Since I'm adding now, I've got a positive and a negative. So what do I have to do? I have to subtract. So 5 minus 3 is 2. And it's actually a negative 2 because the 5 is furthest away from 0. It has a higher absolute value. That should be enough on that section. Let's go on to the next section. And I'll work through some of these. So let me highlight the ones. 24, 26, 28, and 30. 32, 34, 36, and 38. I'm only going to do a few of these, though, because you guys should be getting better at this. All right. Number 24, we have 7 minus a negative 3. So 24 is 7 minus a negative 3. Keep the 7, change it to addition, make it a positive 3. So it equals 10. Okay. Number 26. 8 minus a negative 2. Keep, change to addition, change to a positive. I'm going to kind of get tired of writing those. You don't really have to. You could just put 8 plus 2 and that equals 10. All right. 32. I'm going to skip to 32. Is negative 6 minus m, and m equals a negative 9. So it's going to be minus 6 minus negative 9. So we've got negative 6, keep it, change it to addition, and change it to a positive 9. Remember, I have opposite symbols, opposite uh, signs. So I have a plus and a minus, so I subtract. I get 3, and it's actually a positive 3 because 9 is positive and it's furthest away from 0. Highest absolute value. All right, I'm going to skip to number 38, and I need to draw a picture for this. So. I'm going to go ahead and do this and move this up so that all I can see is that problem. Okay, so I'm going to draw my, my ocean. You know, pictures always help me, okay? You know what, let's move this guy down. There we go. Okay, now it tells us that we have a platform that holds a column that holds a platform, an oil platform, okay? Now this column here is 200 feet, okay, and that's actually a positive 200 feet. It lands on negative 175 uh, sea level, okay, so feet below. It's negative 175. It's on the floor, okay, so that's 175 feet below sea level. So what we want is we want to find what this is right here. We want to know what the space is between the um, platform and sea level. So the only thing I have to do is subtract 200 minus 175. And guys, you could change this 200, you know, plus a negative 175, but do you really have to do that? 
No, you could just do 200 minus 175. So let's make that a 19, make that a 10, 5, 2, and 0. So it's 25 feet above, uh, the platform is 25 feet above sea level. Okay? I hope this, guy, this helps you guys out. Uh, this is our first day of doing this, so we'll be doing it for another one, you know, another day at least. Guys, make sure you get your, answer, your questions answered in the um, next class that you have me, okay? So tomorrow, get your answers, <laughs> get your, an your questions answered tomorrow, guys. Okay, I'm going to stop now because I can't even talk. Have a good night. Bye-bye.